Good morning, guys. Uh, if you remember, we're doing life sciences, and yesterday we looked at what an organism is. An organism is anything that's living, and we looked at what are um, some characteristics of organisms, and those things were they're made up of cells, they have basic needs, they reproduce, they grow, and they respond to changes. Well, today we're going to be looking at adaptation and change, and our essential question that we're going to be able to answer is how do organisms adapt and change? So the first thing that we need to do is really figure out what does this word adaptation mean? And you can go by a physical trait or behavior that helps an organism survive in its environment. So that's what you can write in your assignment notebook. So yesterday you should have had organism for one. Well, and then you spell it wrong and then have this corrected for you for Tuesday, March 10th. The first one we're going to have is adaptation. All right, so you should have that written down there. And the definition to that is a physical trait or behavior that helps an organism survive in its environment. So you can see here, what do these animals have going on here? Well, the answer to that is camouflage. But I'm going to skip ahead here. On your sheet for today, this sheet, Adaptation and Change, we're going to be filling in these things here. What are three examples of animal adaptation? And what is plant trophism? And then you can write what are the four plant trophisms here. Now, trophisms would be basically responses to stimuli. Um, but the first animal adaptation we're going to look at is physical adaptations. So on this sheet, in this first box, we put physical adaptations. And what are some of these physical adaptations? Well, they, they help, or what do they do? Well, they help the animals survive in the environments. They help them hunt or get food, and they also are camouflage. So here's a camel, and this camel lives in a desert which is hot, so it has long legs to keep it further from the ground because the closer you go to the ground, the warmer it is. And it also has the humps which help store fat so it can live, um, can live without eating for a while. This hummingbird's adaptation is its long beak. If it had a short beak, it wouldn't be able to get food as easily. So over time, it had adapted to this beak. So it could be there were all sorts of hummingbirds, but the ones that had short beaks tended not to live long enough to have babies. And this, this hummingbird had a beak and the genes for a long beak. And so when it had babies, its babies tended to have long beaks, so it survived better. Same thing with this moth. It has camouflage. So when the moth started off, they might have been all the same color, or they might have been many different colors, and the ones that couldn't hide themselves were eaten easier. So this one was able to have eight lay eggs and have caterpillars because it was able to hide better. So the first the first one here, what are three examples of animal adaptations? That would be physical adaptations. All right, here's a little camouflage challenge because camouflage is one of those physical adaptations. Do you see the spider? All right, the spider grows. This looks like a dandelion of some sort. So it's the yellow, the spider is yellow, so it's um, the animals hunting it can't see it as well. This one was tough. Do you see the animal in the picture here? Well, we have a giraffe right here. And the giraffe has its spots and coloring, making it easier to blend in. Here we have an owl. You can see that it's blending in with the tree. This one took me a second, but I think you'll see it. Um, there's a snake in the picture. If you haven't seen the snake, it's right here. Here's its head. So it's coloring, it's camouflage, it helps it blend in. Over here is a fawn. A fawn is what we call a baby deer. So it has white and brown on it, making it easier to blend into the forest floor. Here's a fish. This one's easy because you see its outline, but its coloring is the same as the sand. It just makes it easier to hide. Then here's a chameleon hiding in a tree. It looks like kind of blending in with the leaves. Here's a leopard. 
You see it's camouflage. All right, the second one that we're going to fill in is behavioral adaptations. Now, behavioral adaptations include hibernation, migration, traveling, and herds. So if you remember, hibernation is when animals sleep during the winter. It's cold, there's not as much food, so they store up fat and energy and they sleep through the winter. Migration is when animals travel um, seasonally from one area to the next. And another behavioral adaptation is traveling in herds. Uh, you know, there's safety in numbers. So if you're being attacked, you're safer if you're in a big group of people or a big group of zebras than if you were um, by yourself. Uh, if you're strong and healthy, then they're going to go after the weak. Uh, that's kind of sad, isn't it? If you're sick, the lion's going to get you. Uh, 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 uh. So the second, the first one was physical adaptations. The second one is behavioral adaptations. Next, we come to animal senses. So some animals have better night vision, side vision. They have sensitivity to light, echolocation, taste, smell. Those are all um, adaptations that help them survive in their environment. So here, you know, a shark will have kind of like electronic in, um, senses at the uh, sensors at the end of its nose, and that's how it senses prey. Um, and you know, you, we know what echolocation is. Um, this rabbit can hear from very well from different sides because the sides its ears. This skunk's adaptation would be its smell; it'll squirt you with it. So those are animal adaptations and. And just as a reminder, here would be physical adaptations, behavioral adaptations, and animal or um, senses. And if you want to write what they are and give some examples of each in there, that would be great. Um, all right, what is plant trophism? We're going to skip. Uh, plant tropisms is responding to stimulus by changing its pattern of growth. So a tropism is it's just making it's almost like saying I'm going to make this plant grow a certain way by doing certain things to it. So the first one is phototrophism and that's growing towards light. Plants will grow towards the light. So you see, uh, get out of the way here. Um, this plant here, here's a small little light window so it's growing that direction. The window is over here in this picture so these plants grow towards the light. So in this one, you can write, plants grow towards the light. You can go ahead and draw a little picture as well to, to um, display that. The next one is gravitropism. So roots grow downward in the same direction as gravity, and stems grow toward the, upward in the opposite direction. So here, this plant is tipped upside down. Uh, I think it's a tomato plant, maybe. Um, this too and you can see that the stem is still trying to grow up and the same thing with this tree it looked like maybe it got knocked over or something the stem is still trying to grow up um, so gravitropism you can write that here um, the roots grow down and the stems grow up the next one we have hydrotropism and that's basically roots sense water and grow towards it. So in most soil, uh, moist means wet. If there's plenty of water, the, uh, the roots are going to be fine. They just grow down. Uh, but if there's not a lot of soil, the roots are going to sense water and grow towards the water. So the third box here is hydrotropism. The roots grow towards water. And once again, you can draw a little picture there. Next up. Thigmatropism, that's like thingamajig. And that's plants respond to touch. So here is, it's vines, you'll see this. Um, they're wrapping around something. Um, that's, they're curling around or clinging to an object. That's thigmatropism. That's a hard word to say. I think that's the last one we got here. Oh, here's an example of it. Um, but we're gonna ignore those things, okay? So here we have um, phototrophism, hydrotropism, um, gravitropism, and thigmatropism. Uh, know these things for the quiz on Friday. Know 
Uh, what are the three examples of animal adaptations? Those are the, uh, that was the essential question for today, wasn't it? Um, tropism, let me go here. Um, animal senses, I don't see our, I want to get to our essential question here. And our essential question, um, our essential question is how do organisms adapt? Well, they adapt through physical adaptations, behavioral adaptations, animal senses, and then plant tropisms, which are phototropism, gravitropism, hydrotropism, and thigmatropism. Be aware of those things. All right, we'll see you tomorrow.